and this is Dr. Kim Ballas, and we are going to talk about some things that can help kids promote. Um, and I think, Rancha, did you have some things to share? Yes, I did. Can you hear me okay, Kim? Yes. Perfect. Wonderful. Well, before we get started, and I just wanted to introduce Kimberly here. Uh, we're very honored to have her here as a guest speaker this evening. Kimberly Ballas is a board-certified naturopathic physician with a PhD in bioresource engineering and a PhD in nutrition. She has previous background in aerospace engineering, which is so cool, while working at Cape Canaveral, Florida. Um, she's an international international lecturer, instructor, and author. Uh, she conducts research and data analysis on many natural products, equipment, and software. Um, she has written several, several books and uh, has an upcoming uh, title of the chemical S storm in our food, so that'll be exciting to read. Uh, she was recently mentioned in Fit Pregnancy and People magazine as a naturopathic physician for hit recording artist Jewel. So she's famous, which is fantastic. She has many celebrity and high-profile patients, both in the U.S. and internationally. And currently, Dr. Kim Ballas has a clinical practice in Casper and Gillette, Wyoming, where she sees patients in-house and via phone consults all over the world. And as Dr. Kim was saying, it's, uh, she's going to be talking about Ignite the Brain and Back to School Boosters, and it's that time of year again. Um, and uh, she's got some great information here. For many of you, there's handouts. Um, if you look on, the, on your panel there on the right-hand side or on your computer screen, there's at the very bottom, it says Handouts. And there is a uh, PowerPoint presentation, her PowerPoint presentation. It's in a PDF format, which you can actually print off if you would like. So you can take notes or just print it off for teacher reference. Um, so I, we, I'm going to turn it over to Kim in just a moment here, but then at the end, please save your questions to the very end, and then you can type them in, and if we have time, uh, Kim will answer them for us all. So I will turn it over to you, Kim. Thanks, Rancha. Um, well, I really don't want to think about summer being over and having to go back to school, so I know it's always challenging. Even if you're out of school, it's challenging to be a mom sometimes of gearing back up for school because it seems like that we have to participate in the homework as much as the kids do. So maybe we should apply some of these brain boosters for parents as well. So um, what do we need to start back with a great school year? So some of the things that we want to look at are dense nutrition. We want to talk about how that affects the IQ adequate rest and sleep, having hydration, um, which no, it does not include just all liquids, just pure water, um, emotional balance. You know, kids like have so many expectations on them with grades and extracurricular activities and getting into the right college. You know, um, just learning to have some fun with things. Um, hormone balance, because some of us have those lovely raging teenagers, you know, going through that whole experience of from the tweeners to the high schoolers and exercise of being active. Less of, to create a more positive influence in school, are the refined and processed foods. So good luck with that one, because they are everywhere, and it's pretty much included on every school menu. Um, so we just really need to kind of turn the food pyramid upside down. Less stress, so trying to keep things organized and I don't know, I'm kind of a Pinterest junkie now. My daughter turned me on to it, and I see a lot of things on there about organizing, and it's like, wow, the people that come up with those things, like putting everything in little bins and hanging their backpack up, these people are brilliant. Um, so the organizational things, there are so many ways that you can get good ideas and good tips um, on online through Pinterest of how to get things so that it'll take stress off the kid of having to figure out what they're wearing in the morning and where things are. To just kind of come up with a routine. Um, getting rid of free radicals, and that includes like a lot of time on the cell phones, a lot of time on the computers, um, a lot of stuff in the foods, monooxides are in the foods, um, inflammation. Um, this occurs with the wrong type of nutrition. You're getting acid buildup. And then a big one is negative self-talk. You know, um, kids, you, you hear them say silly things like, I'm so stupid, and changing that around um, with those statements, you know, I'm feeling this way now, and then try to reiterate a positive affirmation statement for them of, I am grasping, you know, this math concept more and more every day. Um, and it's almost sometimes like that little phrase you've heard, fake it till you make it, 
uh, helping them understand what their brain hears. And they're going to make more of a brain connection of having the right supplements in, too. It's going to make that transition easier because it's, it's almost like when you have a chiropractic adjustment of how that holds, how you get an adjustment. You know, and you go a day or a week or a month, whatever, and then oh, you've got to go in and get adjusted again. It's that way a lot with emotional and negative self-talk, too. You've got to keep doing it so that it holds. So let's look at who is responsible for our children's health. Um, it's not a one-size-fits-all plan. Not every human is alike, so not every kid is alike. So each learning environment is going to be different for kids. They all have unique needs because they're all unique. So like a lot of the experts that, you know, you rush to the doctor, even if the nose is running or everything, every little minor health issue going on, is this so necessary? Because we need to understand, you know, each individual child and what their body is trying to do. A lot of the educational institutions, and especially here in the States, are focused on this core learning. Um, and that's pretty much like a one-size-fits-all plan of how they're doing things. So every child learns differently. So parents are ultimately responsible for their children's health, including and especially including the emotional side, based on the individual needs, because who knows your child better than you. Kids get a lot of stress, too. You know, we have our daily grind of we have to get them to school, and we have to get them to their extracurricular activities, and we have to get them here, and we have to work and do this. And sometimes we get caught up as adults and forget that kids have those same stresses. They, they're going to be, you know, different, like with homework or a project due, or even peer pressure at school. But it's still the same biochemical response with cortisol that goes on in their system. So that can weaken their immune system. Um, and once the immune system gets compromised, they might be more prone to catching things. Because I know, you know, when kids go back to school, they're around so much they haven't been exposed to, like in that group environment that usually you get that first of the year cold or first of the year, you know, flu-like symptom, and it's just their body adapting to different things going on. But, you know, if they're not feeling well, it does make it really hard to perform in school. And then if that continues, you know, as adults, we know how we feel, like if we're fatigued and you don't get enough sleep each night and how hard it is to perform at work, and kids have that at school, then it makes it hard on them to keep their grades up and do all the things their brain just is in a fog. So when that cortisol or that stress hormone elevates, you know, one of the other factors of that is it literally does kill brain cells. So let's get some emotional health. Because for every emotion, where the positive and negative, the body produces specific chemicals. You know, you hear about how runners are running in a girl, you get about have a runner's high, and that's that endorphin release. That's the chemical. Okay, when you have stress, you produce cortisol. That's a chemical. So it's like even feeling like you're in danger or fear, even if you were to sit down and close your eyes and somebody told you, okay, pretend like someone's chasing you or pretend like, you know, somebody has a gun to your head. What does that feel like? You can pull that up from watching enough TV or seeing things to pull that, mimic that emotion and pull it up, that that fear can be so real just from pulling up a visual that it triggers a whole chain reaction in the brain of all of these neural hormonal changes, neurotransmitters, and it gets the body kind of in this fight or flight mode. So you can feel the heart beating faster, the pulse rate goes up, um, sugar gets pumped through the bloodstream, the stomach starts secreting acid, a lot of different hormones get released, and this throws the whole immune system out of whack. And especially the endocrine system with glandular stuff, with hormones. So a lot of chronic or severe stress, like daily over a period of time, really can cause things like when kids wake up and say, you know, oh, I don't want to go to, I don't want to go to school today because my stomach hurts. You know, it could be a real thing. I, of course, I know you always used to think of excuses like that when you were a kid to get out of having to get up early sometimes. But, you know, the true gastrointestinal distress or insomnia or any behavioral issues, sometimes, you know, maybe they're getting bullied at school or they're having a hard time with a project at school and kids have more of a flight path with cortisol than a fight 
usually. So it just leaves their whole system off, and because of this emotional well-being too, it leaves them more vulnerable to things and even physical things like infections. So let's look at what we can do with the sweet, nutrient-dense breakfast. Um, just let the kids get back to school butterflies. And it's always, especially that transition, I know, you know, in the States we're going from like fifth grade to go into a middle school at sixth grade, and then at ninth grade to go into high school. And those are new schools, or, you know, if you're moving and going to a new school, it's really good to establish a reasonable bedtime. So kids need 10 hours or more for a sleep time. They also need a nutrient-dense breakfast. And there are some studies that have shown that the kids that do more protein in the morning, that have a more nutrient-dense breakfast in the morning, do have a higher IQ level when tested. And we're able to handle situational responses with um, aggravated situations, whether it's peer pressure or what, they were able to handle solutions much better. So just write down need-to-know information for them, help them remember details, like if they have a new locker combination, what time their classes are, what time lunch is starting in, um, you know, their homeroom and classroom numbers, their teachers, or if they ride a bus, anything that can help take the stress off. They'll get the routine. It's, the kids follow routines so easily once they get into the hang of it. But just to get those first few days kicked off, help make it as easy on them as possible. So, you know, have a calendar. We all do a calendar on our phone or on our tablet, you know. Um, help them help to learn, you know, when assignments are due. And, and I know, it's like parents were kind of going back to school with them. Like, you know, when is their test? When are their extracurricular activities and everything? And it is. We're, you know, we have to partner with them. It, it's hard to have kids have to learn all of this and not have anybody to support. So. You know, as parents, we do have to partner with them, and that creates better time management with them, too, because they learn how to handle it. So, you know, it's normal to be anxious when you go back or have new situations that come up. Um, but the headaches and the stomach, stomach aches and things like that can just be stress symptoms. So just pay attention to those, and then we can find some things coming up here that are going to help with stress. One of the studies that I found um, as far as sleep shows that even a tiny amount of sleep deprivation has a significant effect on mood. So um, this one study at University of Pennsylvania found that people who were limited to only four and a half hours of sleep a night for one week felt more stressed, they felt angry, they felt sad, they felt mentally exhausted. Then when they resumed to normal sleep pattern, then their mood improved. So a lot of times, you know, with kids and getting sleep, maybe um, a lot of the kids don't need an antidepressant. Maybe they just need a better routine and a better sleep schedule. The cells get repaired during that sleep schedule, especially during that deep sleep. So it does begin to take a toll on their health as well. That you know, being in those school settings, they are more susceptible to colds and flus and different things going on when they're not getting enough rest. And I know, especially during college, you know, what they call burn the midnight oil and stay up all night and get a project done. And, um, some of us, <clears throat> not to mention any names, are procrastinators, so we do that. Uh, but, you know, one or two nights of that is not going to, to bother too much that when it becomes a chronic habit, it is going to affect mood and behavior and grades. So many emotional balance and support with the nutrition and its effect on academic performances, that the more nutritional density, hydration, and adequate sleep that kids had, it showed that academic achievements increased by 11%. Their attitude being positive about themselves and others increased by 9%. Positive social interactions and social behavior improved by 10%. And they had reduced emotional stress in 10%. So this is significant and how kids have so much on them, um, especially keeping a positive attitude about self. Everybody <coughs> learns differently. So let's look at the three types of learners that we have. We have an auditory learner, OK? And this is they learn best by hearing um, instead of reading it or having it explained. So they, this kind of involves asking questions for them. 
and then answering them vocally. They, they achieve things by reciting things out loud. Um, they're the ones that can study having music on in the background. Um, so that they have a whole. Uh oh, go back. My little bullet point got messed up. They have um, verbal analogies and storytelling to demonstrate and talk through a point. Really help them understand. Um, and this one should be on the next slide. But it's the visual learner. They learn best by looking at graphics, um, viewing a demonstration or reading, but also by illustrating notes and ideas and using color. Visual learners, like if you color code things, that's like all the different colored highlighter pens really work well for visual learners. So they want to read the text and then convert it into pictures and notes and diagrams and like brain maps. So those, um, they do really well with learning things like through YouTube. So they um, have difficulty focusing, though, while listening to things. So this can be a distraction for them. Kinesthetic learners are more of your hands-on. They learn by doing. So sitting still and just reading something or hearing a lecture or hearing a webinar like right now is going to be a little challenging. They need to take breaks and move around during their breaks. And a lot of our school system doesn't have it set up for them to do that, especially as they progress through the grades. So they do better with acting things out, using gestures, um, moving around while they're studying. So models and charts and diagrams to show relationships help with this. So it's important to identify which style is prevalent to excel in learning because that reduces stress. Not everybody learns the same way. Most of us use a combination of these, but we'll all still have, you know, one or more of a, a dominant style. So all of these cognitive skills can be foundational building blocks for each learning style that, you know, we should take time to promote each style and everyone so that it becomes less of an imbalance. But just try to recognize their learning style because you're going to get through to them better. You know, like if you know that somebody is going to hear something better or it needs to be hands-on or they're visual, it helps take the stress off of them. Um, nutrition is a huge factor because if we don't have nutritional density, um, it's kind of like going to build a house with one nail. You don't really get very far. So our body doesn't get very far in rebuilding healthy cells and especially with kids of a lot of the mineral use for structural. So a typical American only consumes about one and a half servings of vegetables and no fruit on average day. America spends about 90 percent of their money on processed foods and some problems exist in Canada. So some common sense rules as a family as a whole teach by example. You need to improve your own nutrition before you can try to change your kids. So it really isn't, you know, do what I say, not what I do kind of thing because we have to set the standards for kids. And, you know, if we're not healthy, how do we expect our kids to be healthy? So upgrade some of your food choices. Um, yeah, make a different version. Uh, my daughter made a cauliflower pizza the other night. So she ground up cauliflower and used that for the crust and used an organic cheese on it. Um, or, you know, through the spaghetti, use spaghetti squash. There are so many resources for this, especially with all of the, like, paleo recipes and stuff on Pinterest. Don't buy junk food. You know, just don't, don't have it in your house. And then you aren't going to eat it. Um, you can find, you know, different things. Like, if instead of Oreo cookies, you know, you can get um, some dark chocolate covered nuts to have for once in a while as a treat. But focus on the positive. Teach children why they eat, need the healthy foods. So instead of saying, no, you can't have that, no, you can't have that, it's that constant, this is what's being taken away from you. Instead, it's Explore it by saying, you know, let's explore some new different things and let's try this instead of this, you know, because it's going to help with doing this. So supplements really need to be a part of their program because we don't get all of our nutrients from food anymore, unfortunately. And um, with some of the school lunches and stuff, it's just, it's just imperative that we add supplements to what they're doing. Um, here's a book called Food, Teens, and Behavior, and this is the nutritional effects on mental and emotional health. Um, there's one part that it talks about in here that 
juvenile delinquents are usually hypoglycemic. So when we get them on a good diet, they stayed out of trouble with the law. And the good nutrition made them calmer and more cooperative, which makes parenting more cohesive. The nutritional density, um, again, you know, it's hard to get nutritional density out of our food because processed foods are abundant and they're not nutritionally dense. A lot of wild foods are nutritionally dense, but they're really hard to find. And what's going to be the easiest? You know, so here we are back to how we need to supplement again. Even, you know, going to the grocery store, it's almost like being a biochemist sometimes, looking at the labels and all the chemicals and what all the additives are and the artificial flavors and the natural flavors and everything going on. It's like you can't pronounce it, then you probably shouldn't eat it. So putting some supplement and nutritional things in are going to help. So let's start with how kids need the good fats. They need them for brain and nervous system health. They need them for hormone combustion and even immune function. When kids are getting the right kinds of fat instead of processed foods, a lot of those sugar cravings go away. So they need these fats to rebuild the cell membranes, um, heart fuel, keep the skin soft, keep the body warm. So we just need to teach them what the good fats are, not eliminating fats like all the low-fat diet stuff. So the super oils are a good one. The super omega-3 are a couple of supplements that we can use, and those are really good brain foods. Some of the unhealthy fats are the shortening. Yes, margarine, margarine is plastic. It is a petroleum product. Partially hydrogenated vegetable oils, commercially fried foods, and trans fatty acids are all on our avoid list. Complex carbohydrates, um, fruits, vegetables, whole grains, we get energy from them. They keep the blood sugar levels stable. It helps with concentration. But again, we still can't get all of the dense nutrients that we need. But they are the better choice over having the refined sugar, all the high fructose corn syrup that's in stuff, the white bread and the flour, the white rice, the soda especially. You know, it's like 12 teaspoons are of sugar in a soda. So um, it, it's just substitute a lot of the unhealthy treats for just healthier versions. A lot of the refined sugar, um, not only with the ECD and the TTK, but lots of bone density because it does rob minerals. So it's imperative to put minerals back in. You know, one teaspoon of sugar can delay, like, the immune system by 60%. And it takes about eight hours to rebound from that. A lot of your hyperactivity or kids getting labeled ADD, um, sugar exacerbates behavioral problems. So nerve disorders, irritability, lethargy, nervousness, and even a chronic yeast candida stuff are going to all be contributed to by processed foods and refined sugar. So licorice root, um, we have helped to maintain blood sugar levels and reduce cravings for sugar. It is a very good adrenal product, especially for kids that just constantly want sugar. But it's also an anti-inflammatory and antiviral, and it's very soothing to the digestive system. If they don't like the taste of it in a liquid, um, you know, you can always camouflage it in a little bit of organic yogurt or organic applesauce, um, and that would help. The Zambrosa is going to provide a lot of extra nutrients for kids. It's great tasting. Um, you can mix it with water to put in a water bottle. It, it's like a refrigerant, too. It helps cool when it's really hot out, and especially during sports events. You know, instead of going over and grabbing some of the really sugary electrolyte drinks that we won't mention by name, but um, this put the Zambrosa in water is going to be far more effective. And it's also going to help their immune system. I know if a lot of people are coming down with colds and flu, I know I get my daughter this, and she tends to avoid that a lot. Okay. Um, look my chlorophyll, our favorite. My daughter calls it clover water because it's green. So, <laughs> so the clover water has the green blood of the plants in it. And it is an antioxidant. It helps the blood, like, oxygenate better. So you do get energy from it. I 
always take it in my water and just play golf because it just really rehydrates faster. You can put it together with the Zambrosa too, and that makes a really nice drink. I have actually mixed it with water and made ice cubes with it to just put in water to let them melt. But especially kids that tend to have like bad breath and body odor, it's really going to be effective for that. So um, the next thing on here is mineral. And again, you can get you know trace mineral content out of food somewhat. That depends on the soil it was grown in, you know, if there were pesticides sprayed in it, if it was shipped before it was ripe. So that has steadily declined for the last 100 years of how we are getting trace minerals out of our food. So refine of the, refining of the foods removes even more of the minerals, especially like, you know, your refined sugars and our iodized salt, things like that. Um, tooth decay, joint problems. Uh, and even cricket teeth indicate in children a lack of minerals. We have the liquid calcium, which I think is super important for kids. It does have the magnesium with it in the liquid. Um, the taste is good. It promotes bone health. It helps with teeth. Um, it really helps to calm nerves to help with kids that have a hard time falling asleep at night, too, or tend to get like muscle cramps. It helps um, to avoid those. Vitamins, um, again, we're back to all of them being removed when they refine foods, especially when you heat foods, like over 150 degrees, you lose vitamins. So get lost, you know, again, shipping stuff before it's right for storing it. So we're lacking a lot of vitamins. So the Sunshine Heroes is a good multivitamin and mineral, and um, they're also like a great snack for adults. Like if I want to crave sugar, I want one of those. They taste awesome. Um, so are, they're the adult gummies. <laughs> but it has 50 to 100 percent of the 11 vitamins and minerals that kids need, and it's in a whole food blend. So they're actually getting some fruit and vegetable powders in there, and most kids love the taste of them. I tend to store them in a cooler place because sometimes they, um, if you leave them in the heat, they do get a little harder quicker. But you can pack them in a little snack bag as a treat for them to take to lunch, you know, um, take to school with their lunch. So that way they get a little extra boost in the afternoon. Because I, I don't know, like with Canada, but I know with some of our lunch schedules, you know, you drop your kid off at 8 o'clock. Lunch is not till like 12 and sometimes 12.30. Um, four and a half hours. They don't have a snack in between. They get out of school at 3.30. You know, they're starving before dinner. So um, having some nutrients going in, you know, fixing a protein shake is fantastic when they get home from school. And I'm going to talk about that in a minute. But just throwing some of the Sunshine Heroes in as an extra snack with their lunch helps too. We've talked about how important breakfast is, but starting your day with protein is going to get the brain working. So kids that consume carbohydrates, like you know your breakfast cereals, even though they're and then they're putting all of the synthetic dairy on it. So the kids who had a breakfast with good fats and good protein performed much better in school. So adding, you know, um, things to balance the blood sugar, starting the day with the, a nature's harvest smoothie. That's kind of what we do. I use either coconut milk or almond milk to mix with it. We throw some fresh fruit in it. Um, I even throw sometimes like a teaspoon of coconut oil in it or the flax oil, and that gets their brain geared up and ready to go for the day. Um, you guys have in Canada the TNT powder, which is fantastic. It has a lot of nutrients in it. And you can put that together, like you could do the TNT and the Nature's Harvest together. It makes a great combination. Also, um, I find kids like to talk about Nutriburn a lot. Um, you can throw some green zone in some of them. The Nature's Harvest, you wouldn't need a green zone with. It already has some greens in there. And just find some great recipes to blend those, like with coconut or almond milk or berries or yogurt. You know, kids love the smoothies. And it's also easy, too, if you're running late, you know, um, you just have one of those little neutral bullets, you zap it, blend it up. That's something they can do in the car, too, while you're taking them to school. So um, we're going to talk a little bit about more of our attention deficit disorder. You know, we're telling our kids to say no to drugs, yet you can see in this cartoon all the red ones being dumped at the school. 
some of the root causes of ADD and ADHD can be food sensitivities, um, especially with refined sugar. Um, prenatal conditions, sometimes like um, as, as the mom has had thyroid or adrenal issues while she's pregnant, that can affect some of the neurotransmitter activity with the kids. Um, nutrition, and then toxins. And unfortunately, the toxins and the food stuff overlap because a lot of our foods are toxic, but specifically like red and blue dyes um, and metals that are going to affect kids, a lot of the additives, um, like MSG and things like that in food, and a lot of the things like with a high fructose corn syrup are going to affect them. Some of the food sensitivities um, they can have is with the sugar again, the gluten, the dairy. Excitotoxins, excitotoxins are what we just talked about with MSG and aspartame, and then the red and blue dye. So get the dyes, the sugar, things with the antibiotics and hormones out, get the fast food out. Um, fortunately, Canada, labels GMOs, and a lot of the U.S. is not, so you guys have access to information knowing what contains GMOs. Some of the, the fluoride in the toothpaste, the fluoride treatments of the dentist, pesticides on the foods, um, chemicals, um, chemicals in your cleaning products, just like your laundry detergent, um, things bleach cleaning the house with can really affect kids' nervous systems. So, you know, start doing more organic cleaning stuff. Focus attention is a product that we want to look at that will help them with these brain connections. It works, it has L-glutamine in it, which helps with the glucose metabolism, but that also helps with memory. It kind of detoxes the brain. Lemon balm, and that is, that it actually affects the autonomic nervous system, so it can diminish like even anxiety, nervousness, um, that edginess that kids have. The DMAE, it is actually a substance that helps to balance dopamine and enhance memory and mood. The grape seed extract as an antioxidant. That is the enzyme that controls the dopamine and how it carries messages to the brain cells. And it also helps to deliver nutrients to the brain, like zinc and manganese, selenium, and copper. Ginkgo helps the nervous system. It also is really good for delivering oxygen and glucose to the nerve cells. So that kind of also mops up some of the free radical damage and helps with cell maintenance. Other things to use focus attention for if you're not dealing with a child with ADD or exemplifies, you know, any type of ADHD, focus attention is still good for every kid and, and every adult too, especially when we need a little extra. Um, but it helps with sugar craving and it can help with the anxiety or palpitations. Um, sometimes just weird skin issues that when people get stressed and they break out in hives, focus attention can help with that. Um, if I haven't had a lot of sleep or feel a little foggy, sometimes just popping a focus attention will help kind of take that take that out, kind of look like a little clearer. It can help with sleep in some kids, and especially those that tend to wake up after they've gone to sleep. And it does protect the cells. So there are a lot of other uses for it, too. Um, ADD kids tend to have vitamin D deficiencies. So that can cause the mood swings and the lack of concentration, heightened sensitivity, and especially like sensitivity to sound and smell with, with ADD kids. Um, and again, the sugar craving, that's a big one. Because the sugar comes in and fuels the brain, and they're like, they have 90 things at a time coming into their brain. So they're just trying to keep that running. Um, mineral deficiencies can be one of the underlying causes of the hyperactivity and the insomnia. So getting, you know, the Sunshine Heroes in or some other minerals in, the liquid calcium would help. Let's look at hydration, because um, sodas are not hydration. So we want to look at how. The hydration can help them stay focused, help them make decisions. And you know, um, if any of you are familiar with Dr. Jensen's work, he talks about how the colon and the brain are connected. And there's some other books out there called The Colon or Second Brain. So having regular bowel movements, I know it is poop talk, and your kids don't want to talk about it. And especially if you have a teenager, it's like, oh my gosh, mom, do not ask me that question. That is just so off limits. Um, but you know. 
it's important to be regular and to show them that, um, how that affects the brain. So um, it also helps lower the risk of picking up a cold. So it helps with building, um, burning more fat and building more muscle. So does not hydrating. <laughs> Even though we drink 10 billion cases per year, it is 7% of the calories in most Americans' diet. And it's basically just sugar water or either artificial sweeteners with some caramel coloring and some sodium phosphate. And the carbonation can actually, because of the caramel coloring and the blend of things in it, lower the oxygen levels in the blood. So it's setting them up to be obese. So let's do back to school with a new view. And let's set an example as parents. And let's start changing our own diet and start um, doing some research. You know, it's not going to be um, an overnight thing. It is a process. It takes us a while to arrive at our final destination there. But, you know, do some research on some healthier snacks. Start looking at some gluten-free stuff. Start looking at using um, other things, you know, like some of the soul stick packages and, um, instead of soda. You can do a lot of substitutions doing you know, your nature's harvest smoothie um, instead of going out for milkshake. So there are a lot of different things that we can do. And kids are like sponges, so we can educate them. And a lot of them do want to know what's healthy. And they're so aware of when they do feel better with something. It's just us having to establish that routine with it. So let's see if we have any questions here. Um, I see a couple on here once or so. Let me just see. Um, it says, do we have the gummy vitamin or the tablet multivitamins now? No, in Canada we have the uh, tablets. So You have the tablet? Okay. Yeah. And those are still, the chewable ones are still good. Okay, I love this question. I'm so glad somebody asked this question because um, this is going to be, I'm going to hear a loud noise of me falling off my soapbox. I'm getting concussion right now. Um, <laughs> so, is milk a good source of calcium? Okay, da, da, da. milk has no calcium. Um, it used to have calcium, and they get to label that it contains calcium, but when you flash pasteurized dairy at that 275 degrees or higher, sometimes up to 500, it binds all of the calcium to the A1 beta casein that's in the milk, which is a protein. Once that is found, it makes it unavailable. So you do not get any calcium from milk. And I find it also even more interesting that the US and Scandinavia are the two um, areas of the world that are the highest in osteoporosis. And they're also the highest in dairy consumption, but they're the highest in Pasteurized dairy consumption. So the flash pasteurization binds the calcium. It is not bioavailable. It creates more acid in the body, and then the body actually robs more minerals from the bone and structural system. So use the liquid calcium. Looks like we have another okay. question. Um, let's see. How many proteins can you blend in a smoothie? as many as you can get your hands on. No. <laughs> usually, usually a good rule of thumb is you want to take their body weight, and that's in pounds, and divide it by two, and that's the number of grams of protein per day for individuals. So I think two scoops of the nature's harvest is about 17 grams of protein. So, you know, allot it out. If, if you're working with younger kids, just do one scoop, do a half a scoop. Um, there are a lot of different ways to do that. That. But it's about getting a nice balance, too, of good fat and the protein. Okay, here's another question. And this one's a little, it's a little more off topic um, as far as nutrients back to school because they're asking about immunizations. And I could literally go on eight hours of, of on the immunizations of whether they're affected or needed. So um, I'm a little biased on that because I did my dissertation on non-immunization and all of the ingredients in them. So I, my short and quick answer is make an informed choice. Do your homework, do your research, and um, you know understand 
the legalities of it in your area or your province um, and go from there. And I do post a lot of stuff on my professional Facebook page if you're interested in reading on there. I just posted like several, and it's under Dr. Kimberly Ballas. I just posted several things on vaccines today. So um, to keep it nice and short, do your homework, do your research, contact me on Facebook if you have any other specific questions. On that. Okay, that looks like the last question. So oh, is it body weight in pounds or kilograms? It's in pounds. So if you have a 50-pound um, child, you want to do 25 grams of protein per day. Okay, that looks like the last one. Rancha, did you have some more stuff to add? Thank you, guys. I'm glad you were on here. And um, I know I have to gear up for back to school as well. So <laughs> I have to pop some focus attention. <laughs> Well, that's wonderful. Thank you so much, Kimberly. Is, um, if there's not any more questions here, you, again, can type it into this uh, question box there. If you, uh, obviously, we, at the beginning, we did mention that the PowerPoint is available in a PDF format, so if you want to print that off and save that for yourself, so that's, uh, that's wonderful. Do want to remind you that we do have, actually, the uh, Sunshine Heroes multivitamin and bifidophilus and Focus ATN on uh, promotion this week until the end of the week on the 14th. So make sure you're taking advantage of that. And and obviously um, all the great information here that was shared, I'm sure will uh, encourage you to uh, to definitely put some in your uh, in your home there. And uh, uh, I'm sure many of you, whether it's your children, grandchildren, um, cousins, nephews, all that kind of stuff, it's definitely something that they can uh, use for sure. Um, we also have the um, uh, August product specials. We've got the Zambrosia that was talked about um, and uh, obviously several other um, great specials on here as well for the rest of the month. So definitely take advantage of that. And then I just really want to promote conference. Um, it's coming up quickly in just over two months. It's going to be in Montreal, Quebec, beautiful, fantastic city. We're so excited to have it there. It's October 20th to the 22nd. We have fantastic speakers. Um, we're going to be announcing five new products we're just so excited about, so you definitely want to be there. The first 200, we still have some left, so to register for conference, receive a free copy of Ty's best-selling book, The Power of Storytelling. He will be one of our speakers, um, so you definitely want to be one of the first 200, so get on your uh, signing up for that today. And uh, we have uh, Bronze Academy, which takes place on the Tuesday, so before conference kicks off from 9 to 4. And again, you can qualify that or you can pay yeah, your way to get in, but it's definitely um, some upper level training um, and uh, you'll have the opportunity to hear from myself as well as Donna Roth, who's obviously Senior Diamond and just someone that is very, very knowledgeable about so many things and just a fantastic leader in our organization and very excited to have her um, speak to you that day as well. So if you haven't uh, signed up for conference, I strongly encourage you to do so and, and you can um, go on, online and check that, uh, check that out. So, again, thank you so much, Kimberly. It looks like we have no more questions. So, again, thank you so much uh, for your time this evening. We truly appreciate it. Um, this has been recorded, and it will be up on the website probably early next week, um, as well as the PowerPoint. And uh, we'll be doing the draw for the $100 um, dollars tomorrow. So stay tuned on Facebook to see who the lucky winner is for that. So, again, thanks, everyone, for your time this evening, and have a wonderful day, evening. <laughs> thanks, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.